So uh, welcome everybody uh, to the School of Business, uh, this presentation about the School of Business at Francis Marion. Um, a lot of you, I think, know me already, uh, I'm, but for those of you who don't know, my name is Hari Rajagopalan. Uh, I'm Dean of the School of Business at Francis Marion, and I have with me uh, Dr. Hubert Setzler, uh, who's coordinator of management, and also he looks at, he, he manages all the external professional training workshops for the School of Business, and Dr. Kay Lorimore, uh, who is the director of the MBA program uh, and, and is, is a professor of marketing. So, hi uh, everybody. Hello. So let me um, let me talk a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about the school, and then um, turn over to Dr. K for the MBA program, and then uh, talk uh, let Dr. Setzler talk about the professional activities, and then we'll kind of end with some of our future plans, which we, we are uh, which is in the works. So you know what we are planning to do. So. The School of Business at Francis Marion, our goal and our mission is to serve this PD area uh, for business education, training and development. Uh, currently, we have a Master's of Business Administration program. Uh, we offer professional certificates, uh, training workshops. We have a Bachelor of Business Administration, which has about seven majors, seven different majors, multiple tracks. Uh, the Bachelor of Science program, which has two majors and uh, two separate tracks. And we also offer a pathway, and a lot of people don't know this, uh, if you already have your bachelor's and you want to get a business uh, uh, degree, there is, it's called a second degree seeking student, and we offer a pathway for second degree students. And, and the difference between doing your first bachelor's degree and your second bachelor's degree is that you don't take as many number of classes. You, you, it's a much more compressed program. Um, I've had students who have come back and said they wanted to finish their accounting, so they want to sit for their CPA. Uh, that has been, we have done that. We've had students in marketing come back and take marketing classes. So this is also an option for people who already have their bachelor's but are looking to um, expand into getting a business degree. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the different undergraduate programs we offer. Uh, the BBA program has majors in accounting, finance, economics, general business. Under management, we have three tracks, human resource management, supply chain management, sports management. We have a marketing major, and then we have a sports marketing track under that. And under management systems, um, information systems, we have a systems management. And this is the latest, and uh, this is a new track here called systems design. The systems design track is specifically targeting people who are interested in programming but want a business background. So if you want to be a programmer, you can always do the computer science major. But if you want to mix programming with business, uh, the systems design, design track is focused on those students. We have a separate Bachelor of Science program in computer science and then healthcare informatics. Healthcare informatics has two tracks, information management and information technology. Let me talk about the difference between the two, um, especially since we have people from the hospital here today. Information technology is, is the people who actually do the programming for the digital systems healthcare systems, whereas information management majors look at analyzing the data and provide a bridge between the technical programmers and the clinical stuff. So these are the analytics people in the healthcare system. Also noted that information management majors uh, automatically double major in healthcare administration and healthcare informatics. So uh, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, the Francis Marion experience. A lot of you are, um, I've already seen a bunch of alumni and uh, here, so you already know about the Francis Marion experience and you can probably attest to that. Uh, your classes are small, they're interactive and applied. And this has kind of been a major focus for us in the last four years. We have continued to 
reduce our class sizes. Um, we want to make sure there is some application to your classes. Uh, so we have tied up with a lot of companies. We have brought in projects into the classrooms. Uh, and this is going to be continued. It's going to be a continued theme. And it's going to be a coordinated effort to expand this further. Our faculty are highly qualified. Um, um, uh, most of them, uh, about 90% of our faculty have a PhD in the area. They teach, um, they conduct research, and they are very experienced. A lot of them have uh, worked before they came into academia or are consulting uh, consistently and, and therefore are gathering a lot of experience uh, with the application of the theory they teach. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about our accreditation. Uh, we have been accredited uh, by AACSB since 1995. This is the highest accreditation a school of business uh, can get um, uh, worldwide. And less than 5% of the schools, over 13,000 schools uh, all over the world have this AACSB accreditation. And this ensures that you have the highest quality faculty, AACSB, every five years they come and check our faculty qualifications, they check what the faculty have done to sustain their qualifications, they ensure our curriculum is up to date and challenges you, and it also looks and makes sure that schools of business offer these learning opportunities uh, to the to people. So let's get into the graduate program. Uh, before I hand it over to uh, Dr. K, uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit. We have two MBA programs. One is the MBA and the other one is the Masters of Business Administration for Healthcare Executive Management. And let me turn this over to Dr. K for her to um, take you through this presentation for the MBA program. It seems that she's gone. Oh, we lost her. Okay. Um, do you want me to go ahead and uh, do you want to skip down to the sure. professional? Yeah. So let, let's let's then go to the professional activities. Let me see whether I can just jump there. Um, all right. Go ahead, um, Hubert. I'll uh, I'll run the PowerPoint slide for you. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, Hari, can you hear me okay? And if I assume if you can, everybody else can? Yeah, I can hear you. Perfect. Uh, we actually have a couple of certificate programs uh, that FMU offers. We have a certificate in executive management, and we also have a certificate in emerging technologies, and I'll talk about both of them right now. First of all, in the certificate of executive management, this is continuing education for managers to help them uh, advance their careers. So there's a lot of different topics that we go over. It's five seminars, five one-day seminars on different topics. And after those five-day seminars, which actually span four months, it's one per month for five months, but the actual time from the first one to the end of the last one is four months. Uh, and you can see here for the certificate in executive management, the first one, we have a, a young man from Virginia Tech, Steve Matuzak, comes down and he is a, a former actor and he's got MBAs in leadership and communications and he does an absolutely fantastic job in developing communication skills, how you can evaluate what you already have and uh, things that you can do to become a more effective and a better communicator. Now, you don't have to be a song and dance man but with whatever skills you do have, you can start to develop them and hone those skills. Because without the effective communication, none of the other ones really matter. Then we've got Ken Burgess, who is at Hope Health. Many of you I can see on the guest participants list are over there, and he does our shaping organizational culture. So if you just think about culture, culture will trump strategy any day of the week. So we have to understand how our organizational culture is, how we can move it to where we want it to be, because really we're kind of held hostage by whatever it is. If we've got a negative organizational culture, we're not really going to be um, that effective. We've got 
I won't harp on all of these. We've got strategic thinking, which allows us to put everything together and think strategically. We have effective leadership. Uh, I actually take this particular seminar on. I teach the leadership class in the MBA program, many of you know, but we have a one-day seminar on how we can develop our leadership skills. And then Dr. Hari does our data analytics. And it's basically how we can leverage um, and how we use analytics to meet our business goals. Our next uh, certificate program is our certificate in emerging technologies. This one's a little bit more amorphous simply because of the nature of the topics. When we talk about emerging technologies, we wanna make sure that this certificate program kind of evolves with what's out there. Our latest one, which we would have been running in the fall again, but because of COVID, we actually had to switch the executive management, finish it up for the fall. But uh, we had things like looking at blockchain, the cloud, cybersecurity, uh, what are bots? All of these things are fairly cutting edge in the technology world, and they're really having an effect on how people do business. Now, just to let everybody know, emergent technologies isn't necessarily just for tech people and people in information technology fields. It is information that is given to tech-driven people, but also lay people in management positions that need to know this. Uh, things like the cloud. We are shifting a lot of our data storage, our applications and other things, to a third-party vendor to hold it. What are the kind of security issues that come up? Uh, privacy issues. So there's a lot of different things that don't necessarily deal with the zeros and one tech part of it, but talk about business strategy. So those are our two uh, certificate programs. Just a little bit about how the architecture of these programs, like I said, they are five one-day uh, seminars. They start at nine. Uh, we provide lunch at around noon, and then they finish up at about three o'clock in the afternoon. They are very interactive. It's not uh, a lecture-based series. It's lecture plus breakout groups plus workshops. So it's uh, very interactive. And you should come away with all of these sessions with tools that you can use uh, back at your organization in any of these fields. And we've gotten a hugely positive uh, feedback on our programs. Certificate in Executive Management, we will be working on getting our fourth cohort set up uh, fairly soon. And it is fairly uh, mature and has been getting better and better and having a really, really positive uh, user response. And we're hoping to get Emerging Technology. We had a great launch on that one and we're going to develop it to be even better and better as we continue on. If, if I could add with the uh, Emerging Technologies, and, and this is because as I talk to a lot of companies, um, uh, a lot of companies say, well, this, this is for our IT guy. I mean, uh, and I really want to, while people from IT are definitely welcome and I think it'd be useful for them, this is specifically geared towards how technology affects business processes. And this is for your accountant and finance manager and uh, the marketing person. And because this changing technology affects the way you do business, it, it is about business processes being affected by technology. So it's geared towards non-tech people, but of course, uh, you know, tech people are also being affected and they are welcome. Uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the professional wor uh, workshops, training, and the development that we do. Uh, these are slightly different from the certificate programs in the sense that we come to your company and work with you to build these programs. Uh, we'll, and once we finish this, I'll turn it back to the MBA program that Dr. K can talk about. Um, so we have done, and I'll let um, Dr. Setzler talk about the leadership workshop that he workshops that he has done and the Six Sigma workshop, which he's designing with Hope Health right now, before I talk about the analytics uh, uh, workshop that I'm planning to do. Go ahead. Oh, well, I've, I've been working on leadership workshops and doing leadership <coughs> training for quite a few years now. And just recently, uh, uh, the city of Florence, uh, oh, Harbor Freight, uh, and some other companies around the area. Uh, I've done some leadership training 
Um, actually, McLeod, I've done some training with them with the neonatal nurses uh, and just dealing with leadership topics. What I do and what we do at Francis Marion is we look at what are your needs from a leadership standpoint or any topic for that matter. But from my perspective, I do a great deal of leadership training. We find out specifically what their needs are. There's some very basic things that I can talk about with leadership, but we always gear those things toward your particular industry um, or organization. So it can, it can really work towards helping you in your industry and you don't have to do as much of the heavy lifting of trying to say, okay, I know these topics, how do I apply it? We try to go ahead and apply some of those so it sparks um, your brains working on, oh yes, that's how we could apply it within our organization as well. So we've done a lot of leadership training uh, throughout France, uh, throughout the PD. Uh, I'm actually working with uh, Dr. Hari and Hope Health and we're gonna develop a Six Sigma course and we're trying to make sure that that's a Six Sigma cer certificate, uh, not just a certificate from Francis Marion, but a Green Bell certificate program as well, because that seems to be what they are looking for and what they're needing. So we'll come, we will come on site, and that's where I've done most of my training. But we have facilities at the university. If we need computer labs, things like that, we have access to them there. So we can really come to you uh, in any aspect do a needs analysis, and then we've got all the resources with faculty that have done a lot of practical work in addition to academic work that can tailor any type of curriculum, any type of training needs that you have. We can tailor them specifically to you, uh, your organization and your employees. So it's uh, some of the stuff is canned, but most of it is a canned set of topics, ideas, and thoughts that are customized toward your organization's needs. Okay. And the other part which we are rolling out next year, and uh, the analytics is a big part of it, is uh, online uh, workshops. And these are targeted to be um, self-paced, uh, but also hybrid where the faculty can come um, to, your, to, to the company and uh, you know, facilitate an on-site workshop. And we are really targeting analytics because there seems to be a great need uh, in the area uh, for analytics and data analysis. Uh, now, all these workshops can be tied with continuing education credit, uh, which means you get course credit. Um, and uh, some of these workshops, uh, we are designing it to have what we call a stackable certificates. This is, again, something we have targeted for next year. Uh, where you can kind of stack one certificate on top of another, and then you, it, it might be transferable later on to the graduate program. Uh, and with that, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll start talking about the graduate program. And Kay, if uh, you, I'll, let me get the slides up there, uh, if you give me a minute. Go ahead, Kay. Okay, your microphone is muted. Okay, I'm, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, good. Sorry about that. I got kicked off. I know some people are laughing because I got kicked off. But <laughs> I do appreciate all your time being here tonight. I want to talk about the MBA program. It is 30 credit hours, 10 courses. The university, we, the faculty, really went out and talked to companies. We talked to alums, we talked to management. We did a lot of research on what makes an effective MBA program. And that's why we created these 10 courses. They're online, but there are requirements that you come to campus three Saturdays a semester or possibly just two Saturdays a semester. But what we think is so good, and many of you know this, is that it's the faculty is accessible. If you have a question, you can come to campus, we're here to meet with you to help you. When we design this course, this program, we also have a course called Business 605. If you do not have an undergraduate degree, you would take this tools course, and that would prepare you to enter into the MBA program. If you have an undergraduate degree in business or you've had accounting and econ, you would not have to take that Business 605. I'm often asked though, hit that next slide for me, Hari. Why an MBA? 
Why should I spend money? And now last time I checked, the MBA would cost you about $19,000. And that's fairly inexpensive for mm -hmm. a qualified MBA program. But I bet oftentimes management's asking you a question and you go, I don't know. Or they're asking you to make a decision. And we have designed this program to give you the tools to help you make decisions. We're not going to require you to memorize a lot of definitions and take a mobile choice exam all the time like you did an undergraduate. We've got an MBA program designed to apply these concepts to help you make decisions. But let's talk about some of these individual classes first. The accounting analysis course is a course that typically students will take at the very beginning. And you're right, whatever position you are in management, as you move up in the corporation, you've got to understand financial statements, the balance sheet, the income statement. So Dr. Poston provides a very good program and course in how you interpret the information. You're not gonna be an accountant, but you should be able to understand how to work with accountants and understand the information. The next course, MBA 705, is econ. Now, if y'all know Dr. Kyer, he mm -hmm. is a duke in the classroom, and he is so good at making these concepts relatable to what you're talking about. So you notice on the slides, and I'm not going to read those slides to you, we've tried to identify tools that you will get from each class. You've got to understand that economic analysis and his West Virginia humor as you listen to his lectures. Oh, business analytics, Dr. Hari. Why don't you talk to us about what you do in your class? Absolutely. So you're going to, in this class, you're going to um, essentially learn how to use data um, to analyze business problems. And we are going to use an everyday tool that uh, all of you probably use at work, which is Microsoft Excel. And I chose Microsoft Excel because it's, you know, everybody uses Excel at work. And you will ac actually learn how to do data analytics with Excel without, we don't need to learn any other tool. And you'll be able to analyze data and make sense of, of what the data tells you. Dean Hardy, didn't you have special program um, projects in your class this past spring? Oh, uh, that, that is for the uh, systems design class. Okay. Oh, well, talk to us about that. Even though Dr. Sells was going to be teaching it next semester, how did you teach? systems this past spring? So the systems design class is, is again, specifically targeted for a business manager. And it's about why a business manager should be involved in making IT decisions. Very often in companies, the IT decisions is left to the IT department. Now, IT is too important for IT department to make those decisions alone. IT is very good at the technical aspects of what technology needs to be there, but they don't know why you need to use that. So you need accounting managers, you need the marketing managers to get involved in IT decisions. And one of the things which we did in the class this spring is, as we are going through the nine chapters in the book, uh, you are actually studying the company your, either the company you're working with or I find you a company for you to analyze and you're going to analyze their IT strategy and how uh, they are using IT investments uh, to fulfill their strategic goals. And I think that project was very, very successful. Students ended up with a portfolio of their company and they gained a deeper understanding of their company. Just um, since I will be uh, taking that class over in the fall, just for anybody who might be interested in it, uh, just to compound on or add to what Dr. Hari said, once you finish the class, you will understand the challenges of taking information technology and using it to meet business goals. And you'll have to, and you'll see the challenges of trying to translate business goals into technology and to express those to the technology folks. In addition to the company project, we may also be doing an overseas project with a, a graduate class at our sister school 
in France. So that will be a fun opportunity to look at MIS from a different perspective culturally and geographically. So it should be fun. We're working on that right now. It's about 100% done, but my good friend, Dr. Dieter Milton, I love Dieter. It's one of my favorite names of all time. Um, Dieter and I are trying to set that up this summer. Oh, and now we've got applied marketing, which is the course that I teach. Now, most of you think of marketing as simply those people down the hallway that um, buy the hats and we give them out at trade shows or they're the salespeople. And what I really want to focus in this course is how marketing has got to be integrated throughout an organization and the challenges that you have to meet in order to get that customer, to get those resources back into an organization. Cameras in that course right now, and it, what we do in this is that you identify a marketing issue within your own company, and we work with you all during the time period to how do you overcome that challenge of the issue that you're having in marketing, and you will ultimately make a recommendation, and you'll find that you spend less time memorizing concepts, but applying those concepts to actually. Make a recommendation within your company. Now you choose whether you want to give it to the manager, but most of the time the MBAs give it to their managers and many times it's actually implemented within the company. So I think it's a good course for applying the concepts of uh, marketing. Cameron asked me to talk about what is really required in the, getting an MBA. Frankly, if you only have five hours a week free, and you go, oh, I'm gonna get an MBA, don't do it. These courses do require time. They do require you to do some study and an application. So it is an investment. Um, some courses require more exams than others. Almost all require some type of project. Okay, let's go to the next class. It's me again. It is. This is Talk to me. 7.30 Leadership and Management. Uh, leadership is one of the most critical things that we have in any organization. Uh, if you if you look at some of the studies and surveys, about four out of every five people think that they have a bad manager, which managers should be exhibiting leadership skills. So we're looking at about somewhere between 70 and 80 percent of people think they have bad managers. Well, guess what? About 80 percent of the people get their management style from their managers. So we've got bad managers passing on their traits to other bad managers, and we can kill that with good leadership. And leaders aren't necessarily born, you can train leadership into people. In this particular course, we talk about self-evaluation, self-improvement, we talk about, and we look at how we interact in smaller groups, and then we look at how we lead those groups and how we interact with the organization overall. And there are a lot of different things within this course that split up into things to know and things to do. As Dr. K said earlier, we're not going to have you memorize things all the time. There are certain concepts that we want you to be exposed to, but the critical part of my particular course is we want to take that knowledge that we build up or that we already have and see how we can apply it. So it's things like how can we reduce stress in our own lives? How can we manage our bosses properly? How can we deal with time management? How can we do evaluations? What do we do if we see some kind of disciplinary action that needs to be done? We have all of these different types of devices, steps, check seats, matrices, surveys that allow us to better attack these type of problems. And that's the type of stuff that we're gonna be learning in that particular class. Operations management is how do we analyze complex problems to identify good solutions in a wide variety of managerial problems. Now, a lot of times when you hear the word operations management, you often think about it production or manufacturing. Well, what she does in this class is really help you do what if analysis, break even analysis. Um, it, it, it applies to any type of industry, not just manufacturing. Um, she utilizes various managerial measurements, such as productivity, utilization, turnovers. It is an excellent course. 
um, also. Now, Applied Corporate Finance with Dr. Riley. He's going to take what you've learned in accounting and he's really going to pull it into that financial corporate world. You know, those financial decisions are so critical in those corporations. Now, I believe marketing is the most important because if you don't bring marketing, bring in resource to a company, you don't have a company. But these accounting and finance and management people all think their errors are the most important. And Dr. Riley really does a really good job of helping you understand the financial components that go into a corporation. And then your final course is typically strategic planning with Dr. David. You know, he has that number one selling book on strategic planning worldwide, or one of the top sellers anyway. And he really works with you on how to develop a three year strategic plan formulating that strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, and it's a major project in that also. And it really pulls things together. Now, although we do not have a formal sequencing of courses, as your advisor, I help you decide which courses you need to take which semester when it's offered. Um, it depends on your work schedule, depends on what your skills are, but typically people end up taking this course at the very end of the two-year program. We also have a course that's not listed here, and it's called MBA 720, and we offer that in different options. In fact, this summer, I'm offering a course on creativity and innovation. And many people go, wait a minute, I'm not creative. Well, just like you can learn to be a manager, you can learn to improve your thinking skills. And it's a one-hour course, totally to help you focus on how to think outside of the box. One of the things we want to do in this MBA program is to help you become a better decision maker. And managers are telling us we want people who can come up with better solutions. So when you take all the tools that we provide you with in that MBA program, and then you learn to think outside of the box, we truly think that that's going to help you become a better decision maker and really move up in that corporate world. But if you're in the hospital situation, we have healthcare executive management. And this is where you would take six courses in the MBA and just four courses in the nursing program. It is an excellent program within the medical field. Um, the top executives in uh, the hospitals locally helped us design this program. And we seem to have a lot of good success with it. I think that's that's the presentation we have. Uh, and maybe we'll open the floor up for questions. Well, can, can I ask you, oh, go ahead. Uh, can you talk more about the certificates you mentioned at the beginning? The agenda of the certificate programs at the beginning? Yeah. Oh, uh, the, like I, they're usually, uh, the second or third Thursday of every month over a five month period. So the actual calendar time would be four months. Uh, and it is six hours on those Thursdays or Tuesdays, whichever one they, they schedule out to be. And after you complete a minimum of four out of the five uh, workshop, seminar classes, then we will award on the final day your certificate in executive management or your certificate in emerging technologies. So the executive management program is usually offered in the spring. So you right. have January to May, right? One day each. And then the executive, uh, so the management uh, of emerging technologies is offered from August to December, uh, except uh, this year. This year, our executive management has, you know, we expanded it because we had to stop everything in March because of COVID-19. So this fall, we are not having the emerging technologies. We'll have a next cohort of the executive management in, in the spring. 21 spring, and then the emerging technologies will be there 21 fall. So you're not offering anything this fall? 
Uh, no, this fall we are continuing the emerging uh, executive uh, management this fall, yes. We have three more of the five sessions that got canceled because of COVID and we're making those up this fall and then the executive management will start in the spring. So January. we will start recruiting people for the executive management this fall, which will happen in the spring. Streep, how many people are usually in that class? The executive management usually tops out over 30. So 30 to 31 people. Uh, our first emerging technology had 12, uh, but we were looking at building on that uh, as well. But the, uh, so somewhere between 20 and 30 usually. And aren't most of those from the Florence area, executives, management people? They, they, we have a lot of people from ACS, Hope Health. Uh, a lot of school district folks have been in the executive management, especially Horry County. Uh, oh, goodness gracious. Uh, PD Electric Co-op, I believe, has yep. been in. Yep. Uh, people from MUSC. MUSC, yeah. MUSC, yeah. So it's almost a, a very good networking type of event too, isn't it? It is. It, it absolutely is. And everybody by the end of uh, the four months really knows everybody else because it's not one of those places where you go and hide. Uh, you actually get involved and we mix groups up a lot. And so everybody has an opportunity to meet and interact with all the other participants in the program. Any other questions? Sorry. Did you get a chance to touch on your future plans for the School of Business, things you plan to do in the next few years? Yeah, so we, we did talk a little bit about that. We are going to expand these training programs and um, some of it is going to go online. And we're probably going to start our first online program, uh, the certificate programs uh, next year. And as I talked about before, they're gonna be stackable. So you, you should be able to uh, get one certificate and then stack it up with another, which essentially gives you a nice portfolio. Uh, and uh, a few of the certificate programs uh, may be transferable into the MBA program, uh, where you basically have to take an exam to show that you, you have uh, um, you, you know the material and then we might give you it that that's in progress for next year and just to expound on that as well with uh, hybrid classes not just online or hybrid uh, certificate programs I think uh, what we're going to be doing with Hope Health and Six Sigma will be a little bit of a hybrid and one of the benefits of having that hybrid is people can have access to information and try to get a base knowledge on something through the online portion of it. And then they can use the um, on-site of it where there's the face-to-face -to, -face to actually uh, apply it and use it with other people and discuss the topic. So it's a really good opportunity to convey information from the online aspect of it and do the application and interaction face-to-face, -face, which is, for my money, a little bit more effective. Mm -hmm. Dr. K, for those that are interested in um, potentially pursuing the MBA program, do you have any recommendations for where someone go should go to learn about the application process and that kind of thing? You talk through through that? Oh, I love your question. Yes. One of the best sources is to go to the Francis Marion website for the MBA program. It explains the application process. And right now we're waiving that GMAT score if your undergraduate GPA is above a 3.0 or you've had basic certificates of some sort. So there is time to actually apply and start in the fall. Now basically our classes arrange about 20 students. We don't want 40 students in a class at all. You're going to get individualized attention. But if you go online, you'll see the application process. You require to have a reference of letters of support, a resume. Uh, one of the things is a letter of intent. And that simply means tell us why you think you need an MBA and why Francis Marion University. You may not have to take the GMAT 
And then always we have to have your official transcripts. You can always contact me, and my email is on that website, and I'll be glad to walk with you or talk with you about the application process. And you do have time if you want to start in the fall. I've posted the link on the chat screen, so ah, you beat me to it. <laughs> Woo! Big guys. And if you scroll down, you can see the application admission requirements and the application, uh, which is right there. So all the information is there in that website. And I'll be glad to talk with you individually about scheduling courses, requirements, what courses are really like. Just get in touch with me. Well, Dr. Hari, I don't know if anyone else has any questions, but um, Cameron and I were going to take a second just to talk a little bit about the Young Professionals of Florence. I know a lot of people, um, we've been looking at the names. Some of y'all are Young Professionals members. Some, I see our Francis Marion uh, faces, but this event um, was sponsored by the Young Professionals of Florence. And thank you so much, Dr. K, Dr. Hari, and Dr. Setzler for taking the time to walk us through some of the educational opportunities offered through Francis Marion. Um, for those of you who are maybe not members of the Young Professionals of Florence, just a brief summary. Uh, we are a civic organization sponsored through the Greater Florence Chamber of Commerce um, for those ages 21 to 40. Typically, we host one event a month, um, and obviously since COVID, we've taken our events virtually, so that's given us a chance to reach some people that maybe we um, wouldn't have seen in person, and so we'd love for y'all to like us on Facebook. We've got a Facebook group. We also have um, a basically an email list that we use to send out information about events to members, and um, if you are interested in potentially joining, um, I know Kristen that's on the line as well. She works for the Greater Florence Chamber of Commerce. You can always stop by their office or reach out to any of us uh, via Facebook. So thank you. That was just gonna be our little summary. And if anyone has any further questions, I'm sure Dr. Hari, Dr. K, and Dr. Setzler would be willing to answer them. But thank you again for your time. Yes, thank you.